Hi viewers, if you have some spare sprues of sequitors that you got with issues of mortal realms, give this easy conversion a go. For this you'll need cutters, a modelling knife, plastic glue, not super glue because we want the parts to weld together, create a good bond and also need some green stuff. You might want to use some liquid green stuff but you don't need to. You will need part numbers one, two or three, whatever one you want to choose, four, five, six, and also part 15. So I already made my prime using the face, so I'm going to use the helm with the plume this time. You can use either again. What you need to do using the cutters, line the flat side around the neck, but you can tuck it under the chin. You want to chop the head off without damaging the chin. Go slow, squeeze it gently till the head is off. You can rotate the cutters to the other sides, which might help. All you need to do is just remove the damaged area around the neck to tidy it up after that. And also try to flatten the neck part left on the head, help it sit better when we put it back facing to the left. There will be a bit of a gap that we'll need filling in after. You could use a bit of sprue glued in there. And if you don't want the helm with the plume, you can just follow the steps with part two instead. Okay, we will alter the hammer now. The metal parts are bigger on the two-handed mace, so we want to keep those. First we will cut off the smaller head from part one, keeping the flat side of the cutters against the metal part on the mace. Twist to remove as clean as possible and use the model knife to tidy it up and make a nice flat cut. Then we want to remove the two-handed mace head from part 15, as close to the hand as possible to keep the metal fixture of the mace. It will need a bit of clean up, make it a flat surface. I'm just going to replace the one handed hammer head with a two handed hammer head, but you could put more handle in between if you wanted to. Now it's time to take the metal part off the bottom of the handle on part one. Same way as before, try not to damage the hand, just clean it up with a flat surface where the hammer used to be. We want to keep the handle the right length glued in all the metal parts so you can measure it all before and keep it all the right size for a two-handed hammer. Now we'll take the handle off but try not to damage the left hand because we want to use this on the model. The right hand can be removed keeping the handle grip and clean them up with flat surfaces the same way. Remove the metal part from the left hand so we can extend the handle. Try not to damage either parts as we need them both. I use the modelling knife which helps remove it easier and clean the surfaces flat on both hands and metal fitting. We need the shoulder plate off of part 5 to complete the lion's face.
now there is a hole on the base where the rock part at the bottom of the shield goes so we need to remove this as well you can try and preserve the shield and lose the small rock but I wanted to keep the small rock so I damaged the shield at the bottom to keep it Back to part 15, we don't need the shoulder pad, just the arm part, but I wanted to try and keep the lightning bolt, so I just butchered the shoulder pad and cut around the small metal clip holding the lightning bolt, and just cleaned it up with a knife. Next use the clipper and cut the small part of the arm past the elbow joint off. Now you have all the parts, it's time to glue them all together. This really needs to be plastic glue so they bond to create a good join and hold well together. First stick part four and two or three, whichever one you chose to use together. Part one needs to be glued to the front. Okay, gluing the head on, it might not be a perfect fit. Might need some tweaking. You can cut a small bit of wasted sprue to glue into the gap in the neck. Once in place, the glue should bond enough to hold it in place. It can be filled later with green stuff. You need to glue the small shoulder section onto the shoulder to complete the lion's face on the shoulder pad. So at this stage, what I made the mistake of doing is giving the model two elbows. <laughs> So at this stage you need to chop off the elbow from the main model so that the left hand can sit properly against the elbow. Then we glue the left hand from part 15, which we will just aim at creating a heroic pose with hand on waist. Okay, you can glue the small rock section onto the base. It's time to glue the hammer head on. It will need time for the glue to bond with the plastic. You might have to hold it a while or rest the heavier part on something. Try get them as straight as possible. We could always pin this part as well. We'll glue the remaining handle parts together and cut the grip to the right size. Also you can use a real tiny bit of the glue and put it on the back of the head to help hold the hammer in place and it won't be visible to see. To get the handle length right I used a ruler to see where I needed to trim it. If you don't have a ruler you can mark a bit of paper with the size of the hammer before you cut it. Try to line the grooves on the grip as best as possible. Glue it as straight as possible, it might need support in a while until it's bonded. Now all that's left is to either place it into the base, so you can remove for painting later. We could also just glue it in now. So that's the model all assembled. There are some big seams that are normally hidden by the shield. We have a gap at the side of the neck. Now all that's left to do is green stuff. I 
I just pushed some green stuff into the hole of the net as neat as possible. I scrape the green stuff into the gaps to try and make it as flush as possible to the model. And you can always scrape off excess after it's dry. If you keep wetting the green stuff to stop it going sticky, it helps to smooth it out and manipulate it a lot better. We also put a little around any areas which needed a bit of filling, like the gloves and the handle. Then we're done. But you can tidy up any excess green stuff and mould lines that needed doing before you undercoat it, ready for painting. Thanks for watching, hope you want to give this a go. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, I'll get back to you. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next videos.